Hi listeners, welcome to Medical Facts today. Today we'll be looking at how high dose vitamin C makes cancer treatment more effective. Common treatment options for cancer such as chemotherapy and radiation therapy can be expensive and sometimes ineffective. However, a new clinical trial tests the effect of high dose vitamin C in combination with standard treatment on health outcomes for patients with cancer. In the 1970s and 1980s, Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling, together with surgeon Ewan Cameron, first hypothesized the clinical benefits of vitamin C for treating people with cancer. Since then, Further studies in animals and cancer cells culture suggested that a high concentration of ascorbic acid might prevent and treat cancer. More recent studies have examined the combined effect of high dose vitamin C and conventional cancer treatments. Some of this research showed that patients who received the combined treatment had a slower progression of the disease, while others have suggested that the side effects of chemotherapy were less pronounced among those who also took high dose of vitamin C. To obtain a high dose in these studies, vitamin C is usually administered using intravenous infusion. Vitamin C has a short half-life of only two hours in the human body, which is why it must be administered in high dose as a treatment. A clinical trial studies the effect of giving between 800 and 1,000 times the daily recommended dose of vitamin C to patients with brain and lung cancer. The new research was led by scientists at the University of Iowa in Iowa City and results were published in the journal Cell Press. Vitamin C passes human safety trial. As part of the human safety trial, 11 patients with brain cancer who were undergoing study and were also undergoing standard chemical therapy and radiation therapy were also administered three weekly intravenous infusion of vitamin C for two months and then two weekly infusions for seven months. Each infusion raised the patient's blood level of vitamin C to 20,000 micromoles. The average level of vitamin C in adults is approximately 70 micromoles. Overall, the treatment was tolerated well. The team notes, noted very few minor side effects such as dry mouth or rare and brief episodes of high blood pressure. This safety test was the first phase of a series of clinical trials that will investigate whether high dose vitamin C can effectively increase the lifespan and quality of life for patients that are being treated with chemotherapy and radiation therapy. For now, the data from the phase one trial shows that patients with glioblastoma survived for four to six months longer than the average survival time noticed in patients who undergo conventional treatment alone. Specifically, Patients who also received high dose of ascorbic acid survived for 18 to 22 months compared with 14 to 16 months, which is the typical survival rate of glioblastoma. For the upcoming phase two of, tri- of the clinical trials, the scientists will examine the effects of vitamin C in participants with stage four lung cancer as well as in those with high, highly aggressive brain tumors such as glioblastoma. Now we're going to talk about how vitamin C 
weakens cancer cells. The mechanisms that might explain the potential efficacy of vitamin C is in treating lung and brain cancer relates to the cancer cells metabolism. As a consequence of the faculty of the faulty metabolism that occurs inside the cancer cells mitochondria, these cells produce abnormally high levels of so called redox acid ion molecules. The molecules react with vitamin C and form hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide derived free radicals. Scientists think that these free radicals drive cancer cell death by damaging the cell's DNA. The free radicals also thought to weaken the cell the cancer cells and make them more vulnerable to radiation therapy and chemotherapy. According to Gary Berthner, the paper reveals a metabolic frailty in cancer cells as based on their own production of oxidizing agents that allows us to utilize existing redox active compounds like vitamin C to sensitive cancer cells to radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Now co-senior author Douglas Spides also comments on the significance of the findings. He said, this is a significant example of how knowing details of potential mechanisms and the basic science of redox active compounds in cancer versus normal cells can be leveraged clinical, clinically in cancer therapy. He explains here that we verified convincingly that increased redox active metal ions in cancer cells were responsible for this differential sensitivity of cancer versus normal cells to very high doses of vitamin C. If the approach proves effective in future clinical trials as well, the new tr- treatment could also be significantly less costly than the standard treatment. To put this into perspective, nine months of intravenous vitamin C treatment as part of the phase two trial currently costs less than one dose of chemotherapy. According to Brian Allen, again, the majority of cancer patients we work with are excited to participate in clinical trials that could benefit future patient outcome down the line. Results look promising, but we are now going to know if this approach, if this approach really improves therapy response until we complete these phase two trials. Now, this is all we have today. And I hope you found this news useful. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Bye.